Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. So he talked about the bad shepherd, the bad shepherd in the field next door. And, And this is a picture of our world. This is a picture of Satan. He says, to all the distress and the heartlessness, Heartless, selfish owner seemed utterly callous and indifferent. He, he simply did not care what his sheep ate, drank, if they had shade, if they had safety, if they were safe or they had shelter from storms. They were filled with wounds and bruises and disease and parasites. The only thing he saw as his sheep fit for is the slaughterhouse. And that's the same thing that Satan sees us as. That's why he tells you in John 10 10, the thief does not come except the thief does does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. So when you look at the two shepherds, you look at uh, you know, as W. Philip Keller is talking about Christ the shepherd and then the other sheep that are on the other side of the fence, they're 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 the world. Right? And he's telling you what's the, what is the other side? Steal, kill, destroy. That's, that's what he's to do. And so what he wants, and everybody who's been and Natalia and, and uh, Divine, as you drive in here, every time you see, what do you see the, the animals doing? They're sticking their head out the fence trying to get the grass on the other side of the fence and that's us because we have want of something else that's not from God and let me tell you something I've driven home and there was a bull that got out the fence that was eating grass right next to the road because that's what we want what happens is the more you do that the easier it is for you to go outside the fence. And next thing you know, you're in the other field with the bad shepherd. You're in the other field with the world. You're in the other field with Satan. The other part of that verse, which is very beautiful in John 10.10, is I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, if somebody asked you the question, and I think this is the best way to, to evangelize to somebody, Um, the thief comes, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. That's one shepherd, right? The other comes to that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. Uh, Which one do you want to choose? Do you want somebody who's always out to kill you, to destroy you, to steal from you? And what does he steal? Right now, I tell you what, the gates of hell have opened up because he's trying to steal your children. There are demonic things that are going on and and I'm telling you right now, in the schools, the stuff that's being pushed to these kids, um, you know, it's, it's just crazy. And so that's why it's important for us to, to make sure that we, we address these things and we live this out at home. Now, this doesn't mean you're not going to have a child become a prodigal. You can be walking worthy with Christ in a manner that's worthy 
And those kids will still want to go outside the fence. And you just got to pray that one day they'll come to themselves and they're, as they're in that pig pod, that, that it'll hit them and they come back to the Father. That's the hope. And see, what we want is the Lord is our owner. He delights in His flock. There's no greater reward, no deeper satisfaction than of Him seeing His, his sheep content, well-fed, safe, and flourishing. This is indeed His very life. He gives all He has to it. He literally lays, him out, lays Himself out for those that are His. In Psalm 68:19, it says, Blessed be the Lord who, who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, Selah. The New Living Translation, I love what it says. Psalm 68, 19, and this is the New Living Translation version. Praise the Lord, praise God our Savior, for each day He carries us in His arms. Selah. He carries you. Like He's got you. He's the Good Shepherd. And He's like He's continually bearing the burdens for you. In Psalm 121, verse 3, it says, He will not allow your foot to be moved, or he who, he who keeps you will not slumber. So He takes care of us. He's in control. We have to, we have to stop sticking our head outside the fence. Stop being a, a, a fence crawler, as He said, right? Stop being a half Christian that wants both sides of the world. You can't have it that way. You're either His or you're not. You're either going to follow or you're not going to follow. You can't serve two masters. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And the word in the Greek actually leads as, as mammon. Mammon. So some translations will say money, but most translations will say mammon. Why mammon? Mammon is a false god. You're chasing the things of this world. And, and you, can't, you can't serve both. You're either for me or you're not. You know, the, the, we were always told by Pastor Joe very simply that, you know, you, you can't ride the fence because the devil owns the fence. And that's what happens is we, we spend too much time trying to serve two masters because of these wants that are not God's wants for you. You're wanting more money in the bank account. Or you're wanting to, to have the new position. Or you're wanting to, uh, you know, if I, if I have just this, this thing here, then I can get this other thing. And that's where your head is at. And none of those things are His will. That's why he's saying, who will you serve? Matthew chapter 19, verses 6 through 22, it says, And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter in life the commandments, and he said uh, to him, we shall, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, All of these I have kept, what do I still lack? And Jesus said, If, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, or treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See, what happens here is the young man is, one, prideful. I've kept all those. None of us have. Okay? None of us have. None of us can keep those. But at the same time, he couldn't let go of his possessions. What is it that you can't let go of? What is it that God is telling you this has to go and you are not willing to let it go? Because you still see that you have a need, you have a want of it. And God's saying, no, this has to go. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or his height of his stature, because I, I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God knows. You're not sneaking anything by him. And he's like, I've been, man, a couple months now, I've been trying to tell you this thing over here has to go. And you keep hanging on to it. You keep sticking your head outside the fence. Before you know it, the fence is going to just fall over and you're going to end up in the other field. And you start drifting. You become lukewarm. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 20, it says, And to the angel of the Lord, uh, to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things. Uh, these things says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness in the beginning of the creation. I know your works, that you are, not, not, uh, you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or, nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, I have become wealthy. And I have need of nothing, and do not, uh, do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined within the fire, that you may be rich, and, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see... As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. The church in Laodicea, they, they were struggling because they had everything they needed. But they were lukewarm. They, they were struggling with spiritual poverty. They were rich. But they were struggling spiritually. They were poor. That sheep that keeps going outside the fence, must gad about, keeps heading out the uh, whichever way she can get outside the fence. That's the chapter two. And she crawls out the fence, so she figures out ways to, to outmaneuver and get to the other side of the fence. And eventually what happens is she starts teaching her little lambs the same trick. And so what ends up happening is you now have not just one sheep leaving, you have multiple sheep leaving. And it becomes an issue. Because now they're escaping and they're all drifting. And the shepherd's having to try to track them down. And the story really deals and, and takes a dark turn because what he's talking about is this, this sheep is not content with the shepherd. The sheep has everything that the sheep could ask for. But she's not content with the shepherd. The sheep has lambs and has taught the same behavior to them. And then they begin to teach theirs. And then next thing you know, you have half the flock on the other side of the fence. And so he does something, and when he, when he talks about it, it's really dark. Because he's like, man, she was a sheep who, in spite of all that I had done, had given her best care. She still wanted something else. And he says, this is a solemn warning to the carnal Christian, the, Christian, the backslider, the half-Christian. The one who wants the best of both worlds, but sometimes in short order, they can, can, they can be cut down. Uh, your lampstand can be put out. I don't know if anybody's told you this. Because if you think about Ananias and Sapphira, they were following Christ. And they lied. And the Holy Spirit took them like that. You keep drifting outside the fence. And you keep running to that same thing, that same thing, God is going to bring you home. Because you're His. I, I heard Jack Hibbs say that this morning. He'll just put your lampstand out. 
Time for you to come home. And we think, oh, no, no, God would never. Oh, no, we have examples in the Bible. They're in the Bible. It's, it's a, just, when we look at these things, it's like, man, God will bring you home early. And that's why, like for us, when we, and this is important for you fathers, when you start having sheep that want to start going outside the fence, you, you need to spend time with them. You need to, you are the pastor of your home. And, and you need to be the ones, because you are the under-shepherd of the home. Just as I'm the under-shepherd of this church. If you have a sheep that's not content with the shepherd, you need to sit down and, and have a conversation with them. Because what happens is, if they're not content with the shepherd, eventually the other ones will start becoming uncontent with the shepherd. How many of us challenged our fathers as men when we were teenagers? Right? You think you can, you know better. I know how to run this house. Right? Or you just, your dad said, did something and you didn't want to submit to his authority and you were just like, it's on, let's go. I've had enough of you, old man. Right? But that's what happens here. It's like he's, this, this sheep is not happy so she keeps leaving. And the sheep is given everything that the, that the sheep needs. Every bit of care, everything that's there. And it's just a reminder that some sheep will take off. We need to be praying for them. We need to take those moments. And, and I, I'm telling you this because I have, I have had a son. I have had a daughter. I have had kids that have... Phew, let me go outside the fence. And we just love them back in. It's hard. It's hard. Prodigals are hard. It's not easy. And so it requires prayer. It requires, it requires patience. But it requires the under-shepherd. The loving, caring, like God has put you there as the Father. You know, and it, it requires for you to be that loving under-shepherd that God's called you to be. And that's why the same thing here when we deal with things that are happening within the church body. You know, those things happen too and it's, it's part of it. Um, you know, I think I, I've had this verse thrown at me a number of times. Um, Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that by mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to hear, hear the church, let, them, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Now I think the key to this verse is, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, is because sometimes we have sheep here. I've had sheep at other churches, and you will have sheep no matter where you go. There will be some times when you have bumps with sheep. It'll happen. Now that verse, if you read it properly, is you dealing with somebody's sin. It's not about you coming together and being all lovey-dovey in unity. It's dealing with sin. Sin. Very important to note that. Because we take this verse out of context so much where well, you're supposed to go to your brother. Well, did they sin? Because if, you, if they sin, that's when you go to your brother or your sister. That's what that is. But sometimes what we'll do is we no, 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 you're supposed to have unity. You're supposed to have peace. We're going to talk about that this weekend. That's our verse this weekend. But the word that's used is endeavoring, which is to make every effort. Another part in Scripture says, if possible, if possible, have peace. Because not every time you're going to have peace because sometimes the other person doesn't want it. And when we look at this and we go, well, wait a minute. The church is dealing with this. And what they mean by the church is it goes to 
you go to your brother or your sister, right, with their sin, and you confront them. And then, if there, nothing happens, you don't get anywhere, then you bring somebody with you, most likely an elder or a deacon from the church. And then you go to the pastor. Okay? That's, that's why we went over this, is because Miss Gadabout got half the flock over to the other side of the fence. So, you know, we have to, it's very important that we deal with these things when they happen. I don't like dealing with them no more than you do. The last thing I want to do is, is to try to sit down with somebody, but we, we do have it happen. I've had it happen in our last church because I was a, an assistant pastor. I had one young man, it was, really, it was really sad because his wife knew his sin. And he had, like, I'm not leaving it. And so what do we have to do? There's the door. You give them over to the world. And hopefully, they'll be convicted and return back to the church. That's the prayer of it. Because what happens is when you turn them back over to the world, Satan's going to run wild. And 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 I, we don't want to do these. I mean, that's the last thing I want to do, but... When we look at that, I mean, it's like in Romans chapter 12, verse 8. And this is what we don't get. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. If it is possible. See, we don't, we don't, when we look at the scripture, why did not, why did Paul and Barnabas not, not mend their wounds? Because it wasn't possible at the time. Now we know something might have happened because we know that you know Mark shows back up in Paul's life. But it, you, it really depends on the person's attitude and response. And so when we look at this as the shepherd of the uh, Jesus Christ, I am the good shepherd, are you content with him being your good shepherd? Do you trust Him? Our discontentment is a lack of faith. When we're discontent. And we need to remember that. I wrote this down because I love this. I, I remember reading this a long time ago. Because when we talk about your shepherd, you have a God who hears you. The power of love behind you. The Holy Spirit within you. And all of heaven ahead of you. If, the, if you have the shepherd, you have grace for every sin. Direction for every turn. A candle for every corner. And an anchor for every storm. You have everything you need. If he's your good shepherd, you have everything you need. Stop peeking over the fence to see what's out there. Okay? Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 